Welcome to Art Attack. What more could you want? A little bit of that, a little bit of this, and lots of this sort of stuff. A way of making really classy-looking greetings cards. I get creative on a grand scale. A big Art Attack. And I'll show you how to make a snake that really squirms. Here's a great way of doing a really moody, spooky, atmospheric picture using the pen and wash technique. Hmm. Now, the pen is just an ordinary black ballpoint pen and the wash is very watery black paint or watered-down ink. Now, ballpoint pens are very versatile, you know, and they're great for sketching. Just draw with your pen as if it was a pencil. So, just start with a few simple lines. And you can use coloured paper for this if you want. I'm just using a light grey. <laughs> this pointy hat probably gives away what the picture is. Now, if you want, you can do your sketch in pencil first as a guide and rub out the lines later. But the great thing about ballpoint pens is that if you go over your lines to alter them, it gives your picture a really sketchy, scratchy feel that's quite spooky. Just like a pencil, you can press harder for darker lines or lighter for wispy lines. Got some cobwebs here, and finally a moon and a spooky bat. Now, when it comes to shading your picture in, use the hatching technique. Just do lots of lines going in the same direction. You don't have to be neat or anything. And you can make your darker areas even darker by hatching the other way across them. So that's the ballpoint pen. Now for the wash. And I'm going to use very watered down black ink. You can use watercolour paint as well, as long as it's very watery. So here goes. Just brush it on lightly, not too much. Those clouds of smoke. And you can even use a bit more to create a slightly darker shade on the picture itself. See that on those dark bits? It gives it an even more of a moody effect. And the great thing about this technique is that if you use ballpoint pen, the lines don't run when you wash over them. And you can even add some darker shadows by adding a tiny bit more paint to your brush, but not much. And don't forget the sky. Done. Try it yourself. Do a moody and spooky pen and wash picture with a ballpoint pen and a wash of watered-down ink or paint. Oh, that is an amazing art attack tick. Create a moody, atmospheric and Halloween-y picture with a ballpoint pen and wash. Oh. Hello. Yes, it's me again, the head here. I love all the spookiness of Halloween, the ghosts, the ghouls and the wicked witches. And talking of Halloween, I've got a fantastic fact for you. You know those carved pumpkins you see at that time of year? Well, before pumpkins, people used to carve these things instead. Turnips! And of course, they were far too fiddly to do, so pumpkins then became the preferred thing to petrify people with. Oh, I think the spirits are working their magic here. Oh. Hey! I had a go at doing a Halloween pen and wash picture myself. Do you want to see it? 
pen and wash. <laughs> I don't think I got that quite right. Oh. So there I was on my holidays recently, and guess what? It was a bit chilly. In fact, it was too cold to sunbathe. So I went down to the local friendly seaside shop, borrowed some stuff to make a big heart attack. Now that is what I call an idyllic big art attack. I love going on holiday to the seaside. The sun, the sea, the sand. What do you mean you don't believe me? Take a look at this. <laughs> See? I told you. Mm. Snakes. Some are deadly, but all are fascinating creatures. Vipers and mambas are highly poisonous, whereas the pythons and constrictors have their own method of hunting. And then there's the amazing wriggler rattlesnake. It wriggles, rattles and strikes at you. And the problem is, once you've made one, you can't stop fooling around with it. <laughs> Look at that. Brilliant, isn't it? And simple to make in four easy parts. A four-part attack. The 
First of all, you need to cut six toilet roll tubes in half across the middle. You should end up with 12 pieces. Next, cut four triangles into each piece. First, snip a little triangle in from the edge. Do it so that the point of the triangle goes almost to the middle. Then turn the tube and cut another triangle opposite this one. Again, the point goes almost to the middle. Then, cut two more triangles on the other side of the tube so that you end up with something that looks like this. This is one segment of your snake's body. And now you need to get on with doing exactly the same to the others. So when you've cut them all, you can then paint the inside of these snaky sections. And it's a good idea to do this at this stage as it's more fiddly to try and do it later on. Now you need to join all these segments together to make your snake's slithery body. To do this, you need lots of these split pins. And you need to make lots of holes. On each segment, pop little holes into the bits of tube in between each of the triangles. Use a ball of soft modelling clay and a sharp pencil to do this. And each piece will need four holes. When you've done them, each segment will look like this. One, two, three, four. When they're done, you can join the segments together using lots of split pins. Starting with two segments, overlap them a bit so that the bits with the holes line up. Then push a split pin through one set of holes and open it out on the inside of the body. Then do exactly the same on the other side. Just push a split pin through the holes and open it inside the body. Now it can be a bit fiddly, but once you get the hang of it, it's easy. And now the two segments are now joined and will flex. The idea is to join all the segments in this way. Once they're all joined, you have a snake body. Now you can even make a rattling tail for it. And believe it or not, for this, you need a bit of rice or even lentils. See that? They even sound like a rattlesnake's tail. Now to make the rattle, roll some thin card into a long, thin cone shape. Trim the bottom until the cone is a snug fit for the end of the snake's body. Then you need to pop some rice or lentils inside it. And then tape across the open end so the rice doesn't fall out. That's one piece. And another. And when you've taped that up, tape it to the end of the body and you'll have a rattle. Now all you need is a snaky head. To make the head, cut out two identical heart shapes from thin card. Then take one and fold the top of the heart around the snake's body. This will be the bottom jaw. Tape it into place. When you've done that, fold the other heart shape around the top of the snake's body to make the top of the head. And again, tape that into position. And it should overlap the bottom jaw a bit. And when that's done, you have a complete snake body with the head attached. Now, to give him his skin, paint him with whatever snakeskin pattern you like. Look at this one. I've done spots on snaky green, and I've even stuck in a red paper forked tongue. And look at that. He wriggles, <laughs> and he rattles. And, of course, you can make any species you like. Look at them all. Different colours there. Or you could even make... A huge one, you know, or even a little wriggler. <laughs> Try it yourself, wriggler rattlesnakes. What's my favourite part of Art Attack? 
your art attacks. All the stuff that you sent in. Let's have a look at it. It's all on the art attack gallery. Yeah, here's Melanie's flower. Isn't it brilliant? She's used lots of scrunched up pieces of tissue paper for this one. It must have taken a long time to make this art attack. And how about this abstract picture from Stuart? Now he's got loads going on here and he's used lots of different materials. Paint, pastels, pens, even coloured paper. Brilliant! And how about this fantastic portrait from Abby? She paid great attention to detail. Just look at the earrings and the highlights in the hair. Adam's greeting card is really effective. I like the way he's used sponge for the background and rolled pieces of paper for the candles. Makes them look really 3D. And this repeat pattern picture has been carefully printed by Daniel. A simple design and clever choice of colours. Yeah, great art attack, Daniel. I love printing. Hey, and I was messing about with printing the other day and I discovered a really effective way to create some expensive looking and very stylish greetings cards. Take a look at these. Now, I think they look fantastic. They look like the greetings cards that you get in one of those fancy card shops. And they are so easy to do. First, you need to make some printing blocks. Now, to make one, you need to start with bits of scrap card, some larger, some smaller, but make sure the card's nice and sturdy. Then, using PVA glue, stick things on one side. Now, you can stick any old thing on. It's up to you, so long as it's not too bulky. Look at this. I've got some rubber bands on there, stuck on with the PVA glue. And this one has got masking tape all crisscrossed, and then I've put on some string in sort of wavy shapes, and how about some paper clips? And when the things are firmly stuck, you need to then bend some other strips of card into a kind of V-shape, like that, then tape a couple of these onto the back of your other scrap card. So you put one on there like that, a bit of tape, and another one on there like that. And then you've got handles and you've got a printing block and you're ready to start printing. Now to print you need to cover your block in paint. A metallic paint works well for this and you can get that from most art shops and stationers. And the idea is to just completely cover your block in paint and I'm trying two different colours on this one. And when the print block is fully loaded with paint take some coloured paper or thin card and make your print. Just press down firmly and reveal your print. Look at that. And the idea is to keep loading your print plates with different colours. And this string is great to print with as you can bend it into all sorts of patterns. Like this wave effect. On it goes and up it comes. And how about this? I've stuck paper clips onto this print plate and you've got this paper clip effect. And you begin to get really interesting effects if you mix and match loads of things on the same piece of paper. And the idea is to just keep experimenting with your printing and you'll end up with printed sheets like this. And I think the metallic paint looks really good. And why not cut one into a rectangle and stick it to the front of a piece of folded card to make a greeting card? Looks good, doesn't it? And you can do all sorts of cards. You could make gift tags, you can make your own wrapping paper, and you could even use it to cover notebooks and diaries. Brilliant, aren't they? Try it yourself, metallic printing. And don't forget, you can check out the website for fact sheets on this and all the other artifacts in the show. And I will see you next time. Ta-ra!